Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk you through on how to identify a binding site present on a protein. If you are interested in identifying the binding site of a protein, then you are probably interested in performing structural studies such as docking or simulation. A quick summarization of a protein ligand docking study. It's a technique that is used to understand or predict the interaction between a ligand and a receptor. A ligand usually being the substrate or an analog or a molecule that undergoes some change. The receptor or the macromolecule being the protein also known as the enzyme that catalyzes or converts the ligand into a different product. The protein ligand docking tools helps you to predict the interaction between the test ligand, whatever is the ligand that you have and whether these ligands are having any potential to be an inhibitor or as an inducer for this choice of protein or the enzyme. For example, uh, enzyme called as dihydrofolate reductase is uh, an important protein in bacterial cells. The function of this DHFR enzyme is to convert dihydrofolic acid into tetrahydrofolic acid. The well-known antibiotics trimethoprim interacts to the same site where dihydrofolic acid also interacts. But in this case, the protein or the enzyme cannot convert the molecule into a product because the molecule is not exactly a substrate. It is an analog. It's, it's similar to that of the substrate. So this interaction inhibits the protein because the enzyme is not able to convert the sub molecule into a product or neither it is not able to let go of the ligand. This is an inhibition. Hence, trimethoprim is a functional antibiotic by inhibiting this particular DHFR protein. If you look closely, the area at which or the site at which the dihydrofolic acid is interacting and the site at which the trimethoprim is interacting are pretty much the same. This area that is highlighted in the light blue color, it is called as the binding site or the residues in the enzyme that are interacting with the substrate or the ligand. When it comes to the binding site prediction, there is two terms that is usually getting confused, active site and binding site. Active site is the area of the protein at which the substrate binds and becomes a product or where the primary function of the protein takes place. A binding site can be an active site, but there are allosteric inhibition, meaning other than the binding site, a ligand binds elsewhere in the protein and thereby inducing an inhibition or activation. That is also called as binding site. So, uh, active site is, is a binding site, but other than active site, there are other sites on a protein that could be a binding site as well. Coming to the main practical section, I'm going to show you how to predict a binding site or how to locate your grid on a specific region of the protein. So usually when you download a protein structure from PDB, it is recommended that you download a structure that already has a co-crystallized ligand which is basically an inhibitor or a substrate or an analog. It could be any ligand. 99% of the case, most of the binding sites are at the sites where the co-crystallized ligands are present. So if you are uh, performing any docking studies, it is recommended that you perform docking in the sites where there is a co-crystallized ligand. In this case, I have downloaded a structure uh, 2W9G from Protein Data Bank where the uh, THFR protein is co-crystallized with trimethoprim. So the region that is highlighted in light blue color, that is the binding site or the residues in the binding region and the ligand is highlighted in green color. So I'm going to show you how to identify this area and how to determine the residues that are present in this site. Go to rcsb.com org and uh, search for the desired protein and uh, in this case i have found the protein that i want to uh, analyze or i want to perform docking with so here i am downloading this structure directly 
and uh, when you open it in Pymol, Pymol is a free visualization tool that can be accessed by uh, students and researchers from academic backgrounds for industrial uh, applications the license needs to be purchased so here this is how it first appears when you open the pdb file in pymol first the red dots that you're seeing on this screen they are all water molecules so what i'm going to do is first you click on this action which a stands for action action remove waters so that will remove all the water molecules and uh, you want to see what are all the regions or the residues that are interacting with this co-crystallized ligands in this case two co-crystallized ligand one is trimethoprim another one is nadph so we are, we are going to see the binding residues for both if you want you can delete the nadph or you can go ahead as it is there are a set of preset commands that are available in Pymol, which can be accessed as follows. Click on action, then go to preset, then you click on ligands. This, when you press this, the ligands and the residues or the amino acids that are interacting with the uh, ligands will be highlighted in line appearance, right? So uh, there is a sec the backbone of the protein is shown in the ribbon form. So what you're going to do is click on hide ribbon. So that will remove the backbone of the protein. And now what you're seeing here is the amino acids that are interacting with the two ligand, co-crystallized ligands. So here my interest is in with trimethoprim. So I can only select the residues that are interacting or that are in the close range with trimethoprim or I can select everything. So here you just left click on all these residues. If you click on the selected residue once again, the selection will go away, it will be deselected. So now I have pretty much selected the residues that are around trimethoprim. So what I can do now is if you go to this selection tab, this basically has all the selected amino acids as of now. So I'm going to rename them as binding residues. Now three simple steps you can visualize the binding site very clearly. First make the appearance so click s for show click on s and then select surface so you will see the entire surface of the protein then you select the color of the the entire structure into a single monomeric color blue for here for example then the binding residues that you have already selected that you can change it into a contrasting color so if you see here, now you have the binding sites highlighted. Now I'm changing the color of uh, the ligand. So you see that the trimethoprim is now in red and the light blue color indicates the binding site or the interacting residues and the rest of the protein is in blue color. How do we annot annotate these residues? It's simple. You can clear the surface then now you're seeing only the amino acids that are interacting with the trimethoprim that we have selected and labeled as binding residues now what i'm going to do is click on l that stands for label label residues so if you see here now you can see that the amino acid names are visible and they are positioned in the sequence that's phenylalanine 92, leucine 5, threonine 111, valine 31, etc. etc. So now this can help you in performing your docking and it will tell you where to set the grid box if you want it more annotatedly or if you want a more graphical or a visual means of uh, determining where the binding site is, you can go for surface, view surface. And there you go. Now you will be able to see where you have to place your grid box.
I hope this video helps for you to identify the binding site as mentioned before. Uh, binding sites for docking studies are preferably performed at the same site where there is a co-crystallized ligand. Usually the ligand would be an inhibitor or a substrate or a cofactor. In either case, docking studies are more valuable when the binding sites are chosen based on a co-crystallized ligand, which is a solid wet lab proof for the binding site of the protein. Hope this video was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Thank you.